Hello and welcome back to Gamer's Remorse. Today we're doing a preview for a game coming out on Kickstarter soon. Hamlet Builder Pro 5000 of the stars, 1599 AD. Uh, <laughs> that's the full title, by the way. Are you, you serious? Know that? Yeah, super hardcore Hamlet Builder Pro of the stars, 1599 AD. Gluten free. Gluten free. I know, you wouldn't have thought so, but. Now man. with less math. Yeah. Hamlet Builder Pro is a tile placement economics Euro game. In Hamlet Builder Pro, each player takes on the role of an architect, attempting to build the best Hamlet. To create the best Hamlet, you will need to maximize your building's score, denoted on the back of the buildings, the overall military score, the overall culture score, both listed on your score mat. These three numbers summed create your game score. First and foremost, in this example tile, you will see a building in the middle. This is for aesthetic purposes only. The roads leading out of the tile are important as they show the placement options of the tile. The dirt road can only be connected to dirt roads, and the stone roads can only be connected to other stone roads. In no circumstances can a tile be placed such that the road dead ends into another tile's grass space. The badges either indicate a special rule if it is black or a prerequisite to the building if it is purple. The white dots indicate the total tile count, and the cost of the tile is indicated in the blue circle. The yellow badge at the bottom of the tile indicates the number of culture points you gain by building this building. The red star at the bottom indicates the number of military points. The green symbol shows an increase in income and the orange diamond indicates the maximum amount of coins that you can be carried over to the next round. As these buildings are added into your hamlet, the stats of these buildings increase your overall hamlet's values, as shown on the score mat. The gameplay continues as before. The next year card is read, players draw tiles, players build. The year card is resolved and income is earned. The first player token is passed. This continues for seven rounds. At the end of the seven rounds, the player with the highest sum of military, culture, and building points wins the game. As usual, ties go to the player with the most coins. Will you be a Hamlet Builder Pro? Get your copy today. But anyway, we just got the pre-release review copy, we played it a couple of times, and we're gonna walk you through what we thought. So overall, uh, you're building a Hamlet, as I'm sure you know if you've looked at the Kickstarter at all, and um, you're, you're picking up points here and there uh, based on a very meager amount of money you have in the beginning of the game. Uh, and you're trying to amass a bigger income, a bigger military, more culture, and being able to hold on to more money over more over a longer period of time. At the same time, different events are going on. So you have these round cards out of seven rounds, you know, uh, orc attacks and all these other things are going on, and they're stealing your money or pillaging your town so you lose your best buildings. Uh, all of these things are going on. Um, overall, I found it pretty enjoyable. Um, my favorite part overall was at the end of the game, you're looking down at this hamlet that you've constructed, you know, all the roads are meeting and matching and you can kind of see, oh, this is the military sector of my town because they all built off of the military aspect uh, of a central card. Um, and then this other part is economic or agricultural. Uh, that was very exciting mm -hmm. to see for me. It, it, it kind of told a story. Yeah. Uh, wh what did you think? Yeah, I, I think similarly, like I, I enjoyed as the game progressed. So at the beginning, there's only so much you can do, uh, but each turn you had more and more options. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it kind of felt like you were unlocking more potential over time. And that was kind of a, a fun feeling as, oh man, now I can build this and I can build this. And once you started building up that machine, so to speak, and you were able to start drawing from the purple bag and you have better tiles and you start saying, oh, right, I have the prerequisite so I can start to build up here. And you start to really feel like you're developing a town. But then all of a sudden, that's when the cards get a lot meaner as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that's if you choose to play with the mean cards. Yeah, you have a a say in that as well, but we were playing some of the meaner cards, and so all of a sudden it's like, if you don't have a big military, you lose a bunch of stuff, and neither of us had built much military, so, you know, and then as you play more and more, you start to remember some of those potential cards, so you start trying to build different ways. 
So it was kind of interesting, I thought, in that regard. But I did, I liked that feeling of I'm actually building a city and it's getting bigger and bigger and it's starting to sprawl out in mm -hmm. front of me. And you're seeing your stats increase and you're yep. like, oh man, I'm really gonna get Brian this time. Yeah. But he, you know, he completely increased his military one time and I was like, oh. Yep. Yeah, it was very exciting. Uh, other things that I thought were interesting were these round cards, they actually have uh, clues on the back, so you can kind of see what's coming. Yeah. Right, so if you know you need a military or some effect is going to happen based on military, you probably want to beef that up, because mm -hmm. more than likely, they're going to expect you to have a good military. But in some cases, they didn't. Correct. Right, so there were a couple of cards out there where they had two pictures, a culture and a military, and it's like, well, wait. Mm -hmm. Which one do I need to beef up? As it turned out, you needed to beef up culture because if you had more military than culture, then you lost like half your income or something yeah. for the round. Yeah. So I thought that was very unique and innovative. Yep. And, and some of the other stuff in the game as well, like the iconography, it's very simple to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a whole lot of trying to figure out what stuff, what's going on. You have these nice kind of player aids mm -hmm. that will kind of illustrate, you know, what prerequisites do certain buildings have, what special powers do buildings come with. Uh, the cards themselves have very easy to understand iconography. Um, and it's just kind of a silly art style along with that, which I think especially the younger gamers would really enjoy. Right. Um, but, but yeah. So I, it's out on Kickstarter right now. Uh, go ahead and check it out there. We'll include the link below. Uh, and thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah. All right, thanks. Bye.